The people who are the healthiest emotionally to me as a therapist are people who are able to feel a wide spectrum of emotions and move in and out of those feelings with ease. So not getting so stuck in certain feelings. Like if you're somebody that throughout the day, if you get annoyed at work, it's very hard for you to shake that or move out of it. That would be a sign to me that you don't have a lot of emotional flexibility which is a really big sign of emotional wellness. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think if you were not taught that as a child, most of us were not. Um, You might've even seen your parents, like they were either happy or angry. Like I hear that from so many people. And so you don't have a skill set. You need to learn that in adulthood if you didn't learn it as a kid. We're not born knowing this. And that requires really practicing skills to help yourself move in and out of those feelings. I see. So basically you're saying like in the, like originally it's not bad to like get angry. It's not bad to have these emotions, but you need to learn how to like come in and out of them easier. Exactly. Yeah. And and then learning to modulate your behavior around that feeling. So getting angry is not bad. Punching somebody when you get angry (laughs) can be bad. So it's like, how can I create space to allow myself to feel the feeling to such a degree that it doesn't overwhelm me where I do something that has a negative mm-hmm. consequence. Right. So how do you kind of coach people to build these skills? How does it work? The first step is really just helping people understand like the wide variety of feelings that they can experience in a day. Most of the people I work with start off with a very limited feelings vocabulary, like I just mentioned. So it'll be like happy, sad, angry. And we're trying to work on like, how can we make that a lot more granular? Um, When you look at research on emotions, there's quite a significant amount of data that the more we're able to label our emotions and understand them and label them even in smaller amounts, the less scary those feelings feel and they feel known to us Then we know how to do something with them. So I want to help people know like, this is what anger feels like in my body And I can label it as anger. This is sadness. This is when I feel annoyed. And from there, once you know what you're feeling, we can start to work on actual like coping skills and mechanisms to help you sit with that feeling and move through it. Okay. So let's talk about those. Like, how do you move through these emotions? So the first thing is going to be building up tolerance for actually like what that feeling feels like. And this is what I would recommend therapy, just because you're going to have that hour space in your week to like practice feeling feelings with someone and it not be risky at all because you're not trying to do it at work or with a friend. Like it's just like a safe space to do that. And you're going to almost be doing like exposure therapy in a way of like, okay, I'm feeling angry. I can sit with this. I can survive it. I can get through it. And you can imagine your emotions like going up peaking. And then once they reach that peak, starting to feel them fall. Mm. And the more experience that you get of like being able to feel that rise and fall, you feel more skilled and experienced knowing that like emotions don't last forever they pass and I can handle them when they mm, come. And I then you see. don't fight them as much. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, it just, it will come and then it will go. Exactly. Exactly. Versus somebody who like, let's say you're somebody that drinks when you're angry. What you're probably doing is like, as you feel that feeling rising, you don't trust that it's going to end or that you're going to know what you do with it. So you, you drink so that you can make it go away. and and make that feeling fall and it gives you relief. And then you get caught in this cycle of like, that's what I have to do to get rid of the feeling. Wow. I I see. So you're essentially saying most people, like they're afraid to feel their feelings all the way. So yeah, we all know people suppress their feelings, which is unhealthy. Um, And then another thing is like, yeah, because some people, once they're in the emotion, they feel like they're living it and they don't know when it it ends. Like it, it can go wild. Right. So we have to learn to be like the observer of the emotion. Like the more you observe it rise and fall, the more you're like, Oh, it's, it'll pass. Exactly. And then it becomes something that isn't all of you. It's just a part of you. So I am not 
when we say like, I am angry, it's like, oh my gosh, everything about me is anger. There is nothing else to me but anger. That's overwhelming. Then if you say, I feel angry or X, you know, led to me feeling angry, you can externalize it some. Would you consider this like controlling your emotions or is it not? No, I think... When we talk about controlling our emotions, I feel like that now gets like a bad rap, almost like you're talking about suppressing them. And that's not what this is. This is more just like, I trust myself to feel big feelings and to know what I need when I'm feeling them. And so that might mean like, when I start to feel this, I need to go on a walk. I need to get some space. Um, I need to talk to someone. And so you're trying to pair the behavior that isn't gonna help you squash the feeling necessarily, but it's gonna just help you ride that wave and come down. Mm, Yeah, okay, riding the wave. 